Our lesson today is on 3.2, rate of change and slope. Now this lesson is actually going to take us four days. We're going to go over 3.2a, b, c, and d by the time that we're actually done with this lesson. Now rate of change is something that's going to be extremely important to us for at least the rest of second quarter and not into and as well as into third quarter. So this is an important lesson for us. Uh, so we need to make sure that we have a good grasp of what rate of change and slope is all about. Um, and as we go through, we will, we will get that grasp. We'll understand what, what rate of change is, how to use it, all those different types of things. So our definition for rate of change is it's a ratio. So again, with a ratio, oftentimes we'll see a fraction bar. It's a ratio of the change in the dependent variable or output to the change in the independent variable or the, that's supposed to say, input. So again, the, a ratio of the change in the, in, in the dependent variable or output to the change in the independent variable or input. And the way that I remember that, input and independent, they both start with the word in, and those are going to be what we find in our denominators of our fraction. But we'll worry more about that as we go along. For our first lesson, we're going to look at finding rate of change from a graph. And our goal from this lesson is to learn to find the rate of change from the graph of a line. Okay, now there are some steps that we can take, and I want you to write these steps down in order to help us through and think through the process that we have to follow in order to identify the value for the slope. All right, so finding rate of change from a graph. The first step is to choose two points on the line. Oftentimes, lines will have multiple points on them. It doesn't matter which two points you choose, but you do need to choose two points that are on the line. Between those two points, or of those two points, you want to start at the point that's further to the left. So choose your two points, and then of those two points, you want to start at the one that's further to the left. You could start at the one that's further to the right, but that's going to make things more confusing later on. Okay, so start at the point that's further to the left, and from that point that's further to the left, this is step two. You want to count up or down, straight up or straight down, not to the left or not to the right. You want to count straight up or straight down until you are level with the other point. Okay, so count up or down until you are level with the other point. This value is called the rise, and we're going to use that value for the rise later on. Our third step is to count to the right. So you've counted up or down until you're level with the other point. Next, you count to the right until you reach that second point. This value is called the run. Now the reason that we need the rise and the run is because we're going to use the formula m is equal to rise over run to find the value of the slope. Now I'm not sure why it is, but we mathematicians use m to represent slope or rate of change. Slope and rate of change are two terms that we can use interchangeably. They're, still, they're synonyms. Okay, so rate of change and slope, those terms are synonymous. And we use m to represent the slope. Just like we use k to represent the constant of proportionality, we use m to represent slope. And that, va that variable m, we're going to see that a lot, again, in the next two to three months. So that's something you're going to become very, very used to. After you've set up your fraction, after you set up your ratio, where you place the value for the rise in the numerator, and the value for the run and the denominator, then you need to simplify the fraction if necessary. So we're going to go ahead and, go ahead and take a look at four examples of finding the rate of change from a graph. So yes, you will need to use graph paper. If everything you've written so far is on regular paper, that's fine. At this point, though, you need to get a sheet of graph paper to continue with the notes. There are going to be problems that are going to be very, very difficult to do if you do not have graph paper. Okay, we've already had one lesson so far this year that you've required that has required graph paper, and you should have graph paper at this point. If not, pause the video, text or call mama, say mama, I need some graph paper as soon as possible for math class. So for our first graph, we have a line that looks like this, and I placed blue dots on the grid lines to show exactly where the points are, we're going to look at two graphs where we're given those blue dots, 
in two graphs where we're not given those blue dots. Okay? So, we have these five points on this line. The first step said to choose any two of those points. So I'm going to choose this point right here, and I'm going to choose this point right here. Okay? Those are the two points I'm going to choose in order to uh, find, my, find my slope, find my rise and my run. Now, of these two points, I'm going to start at the point that's further left. So of those two points, I'm going to start here because this point is to the left of this point. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to end up over here. At least that's my plan. So from this point, from this point here, I need to ask myself, all right, do I need to count up straight up or straight down until I get to the other point? Well, to get to, to, get to be level with the other point, I need to count up. So I'm going to actually draw on my graph, and if you want to as well, I would be fine with seeing that. Okay? So I'm going to count straight up from this first point until I'm even with the other point. And now I want to count how far up I've gone. Notice how the, notice how the end of my green line and this second point here, notice how those are level with each other. They're on the same grid line. Okay? So I want to count up to see how far up I've actually gone. So I count up one, two, three, one, two, three, four grid lines. So I'm going to give that a plus four. Because I'm counting up, I'm going to give it a plus four. Okay? Now, from the end of my green line, I'm going to count over until I reach my other point. Let's try that again. Alright, so I count over until I get to my other point. And so I'm going to count how many grid lines I have crossed here. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six grid lines that I have to pass to get to my other blue point. And because I'm counting to the right, I'm going to call this plus six. Now in order to actually find the slope, we're going to use m is equal to rise over run. In the value for our rise, I had was right here. There's my value for my rise. So that's going to be plus 4 over the value for my run, which is going to be this value here, which is plus 6. Now I don't really need those plus signs <clears throat> as part of my fraction, but I'd like to put them in there just at the beginning of figuring out, my, figuring out my slope, just so that I make sure that I'm not forgetting a negative sign or anything like that. So my final answer, 4 over 6, I'd look at that to see if I can simplify it at all, and I can, I can simplify that to 2 over 3. And that's my final answer. My slope for that graph is going to be 2 thirds. Alright, let's take a look at another one. So here we have a yellow line with three green or four green dots. I need to choose two. My first step is to choose two of those dots. So I'm going to choose this dot right here, and I'll choose this dot right here as well. So those are the two dots I'm going to start with. Of those two dots, this point right here is my dot that's further to the, to the left. Okay? So from that dot, I need to decide if I need to travel up or straight up or straight down in order to get to my other, my next point. Well, to get from this point to this point, obviously I need to travel down. So from here, I'm going to make a line going down, and I count the grid lines there, and that's going to be minus 4, because I traveled down, that's going to give me a minus 4 for my value. So that's going to be my value for my rise, and then for my run, I'm just traveling to the right one, so that's going to give me a plus 1. So now, again, m is equal to rise over run. So m is going to be equal to 
negative 4 over positive 1. And anytime we have, neg we have positive 1 in our denominator, we don't actually need to keep that there. We can if we want to, but we don't have to. So our answer for this one, we could have m is equal to negative 4 over 1, or we could have m is just equal to negative 4. I would probably encourage you to leave it as a fraction because that's going to remind you that you have a value for the run. Whereas if you just write it like this, where you have m is equal to negative 4, some students might sometimes forget that that doesn't have a denominator, and that's not something we want to forget about. Okay? So those were two examples where we actually had the dots, the points plotted on the graph of the line. Now we need to look at a couple where we don't actually have those points. And honestly, guys, drawing straight lines through coordinate through grid lines is difficult on an iPad, iPad Mini. Um, and so you're just going to kind of have to follow along and bear with me as I show you how to identify what the points are. Okay? So, first example, we have this graph here. And at first, first glance, you can't really tell that there's points there. Obviously, if you look closely enough, you can see that I did use some points to help me draw my line. But what we're looking for, if you're giving the graph of a line that doesn't have any points plotted on it, and you probably should write this down, if you're given the graph of a line that does not have any points plotted on it, you need to plot your own points. And the way you do that is you identify any points, any places where the vertical grid line, the horizontal grid line, and the line itself. You look for a point where all three of those come together at a single point. And if we look, that happens right here. So I would encourage you, encourage you to go ahead and place your own points on the graph if they're not included. So let's look at another one, and we can see one right here. We have our vertical grid line, our horizontal grid line, and the line itself. All three of those come together at the same point. So we have another point right here. And then one more. We look for our vertical grid line, our horizontal grid line, and the line itself, which all comes together right here. Just like before, we want to choose two points to use to find the slope. So I'm going to choose this point here and this point here. This is going to be my starting point since it's further to the left. And to reach level with my other point, I'm going to draw a line going up. Okay, I actually go up one, two, three, four, five grid lines. So I'm going to give that a value of plus five. Now I'm going to run to the right and give that a value of plus two. So my slope for this one is just going to be five over two. I do not want to convert that to a mixed number. I don't want to convert that to a decimal. So my slope should be five over two, not two and a half, not 2.5. I leave my slope as an improper fraction as 5 over 2. Let's do one more. So again, we're identifying points where the line and the grid lines intersect. In this one I had a tough time drawing, but we see our vertical line right here, our horizontal line right here, and the line itself. And so we know we have one point here. Now these are these next points didn't come through very clearly, but I'm just gonna we're just gonna pretend that I did draw the line better. So we have a vertical line right here, horizontal grid lines here, line itself, and so we have another point here. And lastly, vertical grid line, horizontal grid line, and the line itself. They all come together at this point here. So the points I'm going to use, I'll use this point here and this point. Again, you can choose any two of the three points you want in order to find the slope. So from my first point here, I need to ask myself, do I go up 
to become level with this point, or do I travel down? I'm going to travel down one unit, so I'm going to give that a value of negative one. Then I'm going to travel to the right, and that's going to be plus three. So my slope is going to be negative one over three. Negative one is my rise, three is my run, so my slope is negative one third. All right. Any questions that you guys have, write them down. We can go over them in class tomorrow. All right. Let me know of any questions that you have, and we'll go over some problems like this for Bell Work tomorrow.